Do we have any questions online there? Well, we do have a question from Lydia's. Mm -hmm. um, she, she, he asks, I'm curious, when making a photo gift, what's your general recommendation? Choose the photo first, then the vendor, the vendor first, then the gift item, the picture, then figure out what to put on it. <laughs> Basically, how do you recommend people find the best photo gift solution when there are so many of them? Um, a lot of it comes down to price, what it is that you want to spend, what it is that you want to do, if you want to make it a personal item. Uh, do you want to make this something that, okay, here's a picture of my niece here, I want to take this and I want to create something very unique and interesting. Is it something that I'm going to do myself? Is it something that I'm going to send it off to somebody else to print? Or am I going to take it down to my local print shop and do something cool with it? A lot of times your local print shop or your local Kinko's or somebody's going to have a ton, some type of output has other options available for you and you can see what's going on. But the reality of it is use all these websites to price shop to find out what it is that you're going to go ahead and get. Um, they will basically sell you anything that you want. Something like this, I don't know what I would normally do with this. So I look at some of these websites for ideas and it's like, oh, okay, you know, this is really cool for a baby book and I can get a 20 page book that has this printed on the cover and something on the back with 20 blank pages that you can put photos in. Or I can create a collage like I did with my cats where I just have a history of my cats in the entire book right here. And with this book, I was able to just kind of, all the years that we had, you know, our fabulous cats. And just kind of like a picture book. Okay, for $15, I thought, well, that's kind of cool. It's kind of a nice little gift to give somebody. Um, you will never be at a shortage of places to look for these items. Um, if you look for personalized gifts, personalized photo gifts, photo gifts, you will find hundreds if not thousands of pages out there for this. Um, some of them may be very simple, check on pricing, check on rate of return, but also do some research out there and see how well of response people have given or how, you know, how well of good of a response, response you have gotten from that company, reviews that people have had for those things, items come back, they weren't pleased with the items. Generally, if you're going to go, I know Snapfish and Shutterfly, which are run by um, Kodak and um, HP, their products are going to be very good because they have a huge brand name to go ahead and protect. I don't know if you're going to pay more for them or not, but you can go ahead and search and find out these items as you go. Um, also, too, it's nice to be able to go in and personalize your items and make them your own like we did here so that we can take these and give them something that most people wouldn't normally see. If I'm going to put this onto a mouse pad, people may be a little bit more impressed than just a solid picture on a mouse pad. I can go ahead and create something, put some time into it using Photoshop Elements or Photoshop, create something interesting and put it together and people are like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, Normally I just get a mug with a picture around the whole thing, you know, see if I can't print a background on it and then put some pictures all around it as one single image. Um, when I started this entire project, I started going online and just looking for places where I could print unique and interesting gifts. And we're here in Seattle, so there's lots of places that you can go and get gifts done. You can get balloons made, you can get things etched into whatever. A friend of mine had a whole bunch of personalized dog tags made for all of his friends' pets for you know, Christmas. Um, there's places that'll do it. Pricing is a big factor, what it is that you want. If you can think of something, do a search for it, and you're going to find somebody out there that'll do it, and you'll find somebody out there that'll do it for cheaper and better. So find out how that is. One thing that I do want to share with people, though, is when you are working with images that you're going to upload to any one of these sites, you want to make sure that these images are good enough quality that you do not end up with a poor quality product due to your image. So here in Photoshop, and the same is true in Photoshop Elements, I want to find out the resolution of this image and find out basically how good this is going to look. When you are printing something and you're going to send these online to some place, a higher resolution image, an image at over 200 pixels per inch, is going to deliver a fairly good product here. Certain um, online and certain applications will tell you when the photo is out of range. You've stretched it too far. You've made it too big for the quality. iPhoto does that. It tells you, wait a second, you've stretched this too far. A lot of times people will take pictures from their camera and most cameras will save these pictures as JPEGs. JPEG is one of the standard formats for sending 
pictures anywhere through email, putting them online. But one of the problems with JPEGs is that JPEGs are what they call a lossy format. You are going to lose information every time you save a JPEG file. So when you get a file as a JPEG and you save it, you want to make sure that under all circumstances you always save the JPEG as the maximum quality and the maximum size you can get it. Even though we're saving this as the maximum quality, this does not mean that it's going to be the best quality. It is the best quality that we can get out of a JPEG. The more you save a JPEG and the more you compress your JPEG there, the worse the quality of this is. And if you save it too many times as a JPEG, you will get a puddle of pixel poo. It is it compresses it, it creates problems with the image, and everybody uses JPEGs for virtually everything to upload. Now there are ways that you can get by with not having these compression issues, but not every online service will take different formats. Every online service will go ahead and take a JPEG. You can upload it because it's pretty much a universal format. Keep in mind, some will allow you to do PDFs, but you'll have to find out which one is going to allow you to do that. We can also go in and under Photoshop Elements or Photoshop here, I can go in and I can save these particular items as a PNG file. Now a PNG file is a more advanced file that is used in web uh, sites currently here. It is a non-lossy compression. So when we save it, like we save a JPEG, JPEGs always compress. No matter what we do, they always compress. A little bit or a lot, but there's compression in there anyway. When we save something as a PNG file, a PNG file allows me to save these and not compress the particular file. Again, some online services will allow PNGs, other ones won't. With the particular uh, scrapbook graphics that we were using here, a lot of these files come as PNG files that I can use, say something like this where I've got these little ties right here. This comes as a PNG file because it allows me to have a transparent background and I can then take this, drag it into Photoshop or Photoshop Elements and take this and apply it to my image and so I can have a transparent background on here and put these elements kind of across the whole thing like this. So PNGs work great. They give you a transparent background to be able to use that way. But again, not all online services are going to take PNG files. Now the one thing I wanted to show you was lulu.com. And for those out there, lulu.com has been um, out there kind of on the forefront for one-off printing, digital printing of books, things like that. Um, they have a publish feature here, which is I think what Lulu was really known for. You can do books, you can also do eBooks, photo books, calendars, cookbooks, poetry books, yearbooks, books, books, books. This is what they were known for to begin with, and they do a fantastic job at this stuff. Print any book, any size, the way you want to. Find out how to do it, how to make eBooks. Turn to photo books here. Lulu.com, I would say, kind of started the whole thing as um, from the digital printing standpoint. They don't offer, you know, little tchotchkes and things like that. They, they're not going to print on glass, things like that. But they do books, online printing books, probably better than most people do. All different types of bindings here. A saddle stitch, which is a very simple stitch right there. Perfect bound, which is going to give you all your signatures bound in. Coil bound, either plastic or metal. Nice little dust jacket or a complete case wrap around your entire thing. As you see, they walk you through this. Hardcover, soft cover, every single size you can possibly imagine there, what it's going to look like. Publisher grade, standard, or premium quality paper and printing. Walk through the whole thing, and you can actually go and sell this stuff, get an ISBN number, put it onto Amazon.com, especially when you're doing ebooks. You need to have different formats to go ahead and print them in. But, you know, maybe if you've got a really tech savvy family and friends and you want to do something, you can go ahead and print ebooks. Put everything together, they can do a PDF, bring it over to Lulu here, take your ebooks, and be able to get them to walk you through, make it into an ebook there. They too do photo books, calendars, CDs, DVDs, cookbooks. If that's a unique one, you want to do something fantastic, there you go. You can find a whole bunch of recipes online, I'm sure. Hardcover, paperback, 
set it all up, drag your photos in there, make your cookbook of your own personal recipes, send it to somebody as well. You have a little poetry or some haikus that you want to give somebody. Again, this is just a take on a photo book where you can put all these poetries in. You can figure out what size you want. You can format the whole thing, add your font so it's legible or not as you go. Yearbooks, wedding books, weddings, absolutely fantastic. You can spend a fortune on wedding. Yes, Sarah? We just had a recommendation in the chat room for blurb.com. Blurb? Very similar to Lulu. Lulu? Okay, let's take a look at that as well. So, <coughs> B-L-U-R-B, blurb.com. There it is, making books, pricing, bookstore just published, blurb for good. Yep, bookify, PDF to book, hire an expert, bookmaker, book ideas, holiday gifts, best gift ever. And they ship everywhere around the world. So that's blurb.com. Lulu has a little bit nicer website there, but I'm sure you can go through and make do with this as you go. Very cool. These are all books that people have published already through this. No more need for a big publisher. Um, here's the perfect wedding, creative solutions for everybody, how to go in, create a really nice wedding book that you can give to everybody as you go, create DVDs of that, bride and groom, photographers, wedding planners, go through and <laughs> if it's out there, you can certainly find it. Start your book, upload your files, request a consultation. It's amazing. Truly, what you want to do with those items. But keep in mind, the best thing is, is to have good quality images to start with. And so, I can't reiterate this enough. If you really want to create something unique and interesting, yeah, just going in and taking a great picture of you know friends and family like this is fine. But going in and creating a composite of all this great stuff, then saving that as an image, looks a lot more cool. Because this is fine. It's a cute little picture, you know, dad and daughter, you know, having fun. But you put in a unique background, put some holiday scrapbooking items on there, put it in there, put some text in there, and then drop it on as a single photo. Then you create much more unique gifts because you've gone in and actually created these elements yourself, and then you get something really nice like this <clears throat> and everything else that you have on there, and now you start to get into the realm of unique gifts. So is there anything else that people want to see, what it is that you can do, how you can do it? out there because I think we've given them enough to kind of overwhelm them. Well, we did have a few questions, um, mm -hmm. a couple of them going back to iPhoto. Okay. Um, can you, we, we talked about the iPhoto calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, you didn't seem to think you could make a PDF out of that, that is that correct? Um, I don't think there is because we only have the buy the calendar. Um, I don't have the, we if I go under print. file print here, I know we don't have a printer installed on this. But can you, down at the lower left, there's the PDF button, save as PDF. So we're gonna try save as PDF here onto this. It would be nice if we could. Because <clears throat> Apple usually is pretty good about doing that kind of stuff. And I, I think that's the way some people have gotten um, photo books as well, is to print them to PDF and then they can take them and print anywhere them on their own printer or somewhere else. Yeah, anywhere that you want to, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or even email them for that matter. Yes. Yep, because you can do a presentation. So this yep, is fun, watching like paint dry. Yeah, no, this Digital is this paint. is actually take the whole thing and you can print right to a PDF here because it's 25 pages. So let me go in and see if our untitled, yep, there it is. So there's our calendar as well. Once we take this PDF, then you could go in and you could drop in page, you could then go in and drop images into the calendar section mm -hmm. at this point okay. because you can open up any one of these pages in Photoshop and you can add your own elements to these pages that you want to. Let's give that a shot. So now I can go in under File, Open, get my untitled PDF here, go to a specific page. There's all my pages, you know, say right here.
there's always ways to do this kind of stuff. That's why I like having everything native on the machine so that I could go in and I could take her and drag her right in, put her into one of the dates here that I want. Screen that back if I want to. something like that. Oh, would that be cute? So, something like that. And there I have the picture of the person in that calendar there. Take a little bit of work to go through and do this and then redo it into the PDF here. But um, at that point you can't. And it's a pre-made calendar too is great because you can find calendars online as well. And so <coughs> that technique would work for um, for photo books as well. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. <coughs> Definitely. Now, if budget is really tight, one of the things that you can do is you can go in and you can make your own labels. And there was one I didn't see it on my. Let me open this up here. I thought there was a. I want to go to my labels here. Uh, let's see. Gifts, peekaboo, creation, cutout, label right there. Personal creations. This was one that I, I really liked. You can you can do just about everything. This is more um, items where you can get anything personalized. I mean, chairs, things like that, backpacks, you know, glasses cut and etched. Great for a wedding, things like that. Um, but the one other thing was just very plain and simple was going to avery.com and doing projects and ideas. A lot of people don't know that you can actually go and you can buy Avery labels and you can go online and download templates that you can load into Word and literally drop photos and text in there and create your own labels, your own hang tags. Um, you know, here's uh, signs that you can go ahead and create. Sign kits, they actually make sign kits for you, creating in banners, things like that. Um, stickers mailing labels, custom gift tags, things like that. These are all through Avery, and they make thousands of different templates there. And you can download all the templates right under your computer as PDFs or a Word document so that you can then propagate all those with all your pictures, print it, and Avery will supply the paper or the stickers on there. It's all going to be uh, stuff that you can print through your printer at home. Very easy to do, very simple, very clean. Nice way to do it and save money as well. Um, <clears throat> you can walk you through it. They'll give you step-by-step -step things you can do. But here's birthday, you know, holiday gifts, crafts and scrapbooking, how to go through and do this stuff. Yeah, lots of cool, interesting stuff. People don't think that, you know, Avery labels and things like that would be something that would be, you know, great or cool. But yeah, I mean, gift tags, birthday balloons, things like that. Yeah, everybody gives it really good rating, so check it out. Great way to go ahead and do that, and they're all over the place. Everybody's heard of Avery Labels. You can buy the labels, and inside the label package, they will actually give you the um, uh, actual template code that you can go in, and there's the templates in the software. You can go in, and you can search for the templates for all these different labels right there, and they'll show you how to use it. And um, <clears throat> so if you want to have DVDs, DVD covers, postcards, labels, they make all this stuff. Template 5472, wonder what that is, but you can find that kind of stuff. And I know there was there was one other one that I had put on my uh, site. I can't remember. There it is, my own labels. I forgot to call this one up when I put it on there. But it is on the site, um, our Creative Live site. That was one of the links there. Is myownlabels.com, and this is every type of label you could imagine. So, if somebody you want to do gift tags, you know, somebody bottles their own beer and you want to put labels on that, it's having a hard time finding it. All right, well, unfortunately, we can't get my own labels to open, so I can show you that. Um, but a cool site nonetheless. I really enjoyed that one for <laughs> for sure. So do we have any other questions? Um, yeah, just a moment here. 
Yeah. Um, do you have any comments about um, color management throughout the photo gifting <laughs> process? I'm sure there are certain vendors um, who pay more attention to that. Than color others. management is a very tricky topic. A lot of places will send you email previews of what it's going to look like. Unfortunately, you have very little control over what it looks like on your screen as opposed to what it looks like on their screen as opposed to what it prints out on their printer. Most places are going to calibrate everything that they do to get the best color they possibly can. Um, it's always best to order something small before you order 50 of one thing and find out that it's absolutely awful looking. Generally, they're, they're probably going to do their best to get something that's going to look really, really, really good on there, but there's never a guarantee that it's going to look like it does on your screen as it does on your final product. Color management is a great, fantastic thing when you have control over the entire process. You don't in this case. <laughs> there are a few, a few of those websites, I think, are probably color management tuned. I'm going to guess that Snapfish and uh, um, Shutterfly are probably going to do really, really good color management because, I mean, HP and Kodak make their a lot of their money on color <laughs> uh, printers, things like that. So they probably have enhancements and features that they do to make it look good. Um, but it's the classic garbage in, garbage out. You know, poor quality image is not going to look any better be better when you make it bigger on a mug or a mouse pad or a calendar. It's just going to be idolized for life. So everything, um, uh, er, I mean, I'm sorry, earlier you talked about Mini Bridge, and mm -hmm. a question came up oh, if you sure. could give a brief description of Mini Bridge. Mini Bridge is like Mini Me, <laughs> and Mini Bridge occurs here in Photoshop, um, up here in the upper left hand corner. This is CS5. Mini Bridge just allows me to open up this little bridge panel in my uh, Photoshop window. Other than going in and opening up Bridge here, where I've got, uh, it takes up my entire image, and then I have to go through and I scroll through all of my items in this particular folder, then I could then go in and drag it into Photoshop. Mini Bridge allows me to see what bridge normally shows me. In this case, I just have my you know family photos right here. And from this, I can then just drop and drag this right in to my image as I go, instead of going into bridge itself. So mini bridge is just a way to have these pictures readily available in a panel inside Photoshop. And that's, you can get to that from under the Windows menu? Windows um, it's right here under the, uh, under the control bar, launch mini bridge. And under the Windows menu, they've grouped things together, so I'm... It's always hard to find. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where Mini ah, Bridge is bridge here. I know we can click Mini Bridge right there. I know there's one other place to see it. View... Browse, maybe, under the File menu? Uh, file... Browse and Mini Bridge. Yep, yeah, there we there go. go. Mm -hmm. So, Bridge and Mini Bridge. And does, does Photoshop Elements have Mini Bridge? Photoshop Elements does not have Mini Bridge. Photoshop Elements has basically Organizer, mm. which is a separate application within Photoshop Elements, which acts very much like Lightroom, Lightroom. slash iPhoto slash Bridge. <coughs> mini Lightroom? Is yes, Mini Lightroom, <laughs> Mini Bridge, Mini iPhoto. <laughs> so Organizer is unique to Photoshop Elements. It keeps all of your images in there. When you edit something, it creates another copy of that image when you edit it. But it allows you to pull from and use in Photoshop Elements, all those photos that are in Organizer. So if you don't have iPhoto and you're working on a PC and you buy this, um, Organizer may work really well for you if you use Photoshop Elements. So if you open up that calendar um, in Photoshop in order to make those changes like you were just showing a moment ago, um, mm -hmm. it, does that rasterize the calendar? Oh, it does. It does rasterize the calendar, but uh, if you want further, I mean, there's always trade-offs. Yeah. So if you want something that you can go in and edit further, you're going to need so to start someplace. Could I have built this whole thing in Photoshop? Sure, I could have. It would have taken me days instead of minutes to go ahead and do because they already have the software. But if you do want to customize this stuff, there, I mean, you could open this up in Illustrator, put it in there, put it all back together, save it as a page, and P as a PDF, put it back in your PDF document, and send it that way. Um, <clears throat> If it's you the, have Illustrator. <laughs> if you have Illustrator. The biggest thing is that you can you can do whatever you want to do. The more you know and the more software you have, 
the better you can do with these type of things. If you're stuck with no photo editing, no photo storage, no photo manipulation, you're basically stuck with whatever online or whatever applications will allow you to drop and drag and resize into and then print from there or have items created from there. When you want to begin to create things on your own, you can do an InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop, Acrobat, and begin to create a whole bunch of things and get them very unique and interesting. And so there's always ways to do everything. Yes, David. Does iPhoto allow much adjustment of color and color management? <clears throat> it allows some. Um, as we go in here, if we just look at particular photos in here, and um, you know, let me get my one of my favorite photos here. When we're in iPhoto here, we do have some editing capabilities. Um, <clears throat> we can go in and we can edit a photo and we can straighten, we can enhance, we can do red eye retouch and we can do some effects. So if we go in and enhance, it just goes in and gives a little bit of enhancement and I can get rid of red eye. Retouch, you know, click or drag over the blemish to remove, you know, so if I want to get rid of that, I can drag over it and it kind of heals the things a bit. We don't have that much control. We can do some cool effects on this and you know we can do our original or we can do boost color we can blur the edge yeah so some editing within in there give that soft glowing effect um, we can also go in and hit adjust and you know do some basic adjustments in here as we go And I can copy this from one and paste it to another if I want. So that we have that. That's the basics of the editing right there. Other than that, I'm pretty much stuck with what I have. So you'd probably want to use Photoshop or Lightroom to better adjust your photos to make them look the rest. Absolutely. The more, yeah, the more you have, to, the more you have, software-wise and knowledge-wise, the better off you're going to be being able to create these type of items. Does does iPhoto um, honor color profiles? I don't know if they do or not. Um, that's a really good question. I mean, you can go under and um, get some photo info here. Let's see. I want to be able to view. Let's get out of there. I want to be able to see the photo info on these. Oh, so this is a newer version. I don't. I want to be able to get the uh, show extended photo info. There we go. Um, camera exposure location. So with this, shutter aperture exposure length, ISO brightness. I don't see color profile attached to this as metadata. I'm sure you could go ahead and have that attached to it. I don't know what iPhoto is going to do with that once it has that data in there, whether it's been profiled or not. It probably just keeps it there. It probably doesn't do anything with it until you bring it into some type of application that is going to need it or wants to pull the information from there. And we've had a recommendation from the chat room for uh, from Lydia's for MyLifeHeritage.com. MyLifeHeritage.com. Which, when I went to it, actually turned to HeritageMakers.com. We're not having any luck with the websites here. Fail to open. Um, I could have too many things open. Try, try HeritageMakers.com. While we're waiting on the site, do you have any recommendation? We've, we've had someone in the chat room asking what would be the best format to save photos at for archival purposes? Best way to save photos at? Um, I mean, JPEGs are lossy, so TIFF, PNG, Photoshop file. Um, 
Well, PNGs, there's a slight problem with PNGs because PNGs will cut down the number of colors in there but doesn't compress it unless you do a PNG 24. Best way to save something as a non-lossy format that's going to be universally accepted is going to be um, probably saving this as a TIFF file. We don't use TIFF files very often, um, but a TIFF file would definitely work as that or a Photoshop file. A Photoshop file tends to be tricky because then you need Photoshop to use it and a lot of applications online don't recognize it. But if you really want to preserve everything and make it really worthwhile, a Photoshop PDF may work really well for you. It's going to preserve the quality of it, going to preserve the entire color range. Everything that's going to be associated with this file will be preserved. And you can save this as a Photoshop PDF, which will well, I think that uh, the person who was asking that question was uh, asking about since if I save a JPEG over and over again, it loses quality. Correct. What quality? What what format do I want to save in for my working documents? For your I working, yeah, for your working documents. If you're working in Photoshop, save it as a Photoshop document. Um, that's what you can save it as. It's simple. It's easy, and then you have access to it when you're working in Photoshop. In Photoshop Elements, you can save it as a Photoshop Elements document which is essentially the same as a Photoshop document because you and can open those up. And if you're thinking longer term, it might be safe to save it as a layered TIFF file because you can open those in other applications as well. Mm -hmm. Or a Photoshop PDF file, which will allow you to do the same thing. Yeah. Then it gives you the flexibility of opening them up using Acrobat or Acrobat Reader as well as Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'm looking. Um, had a few earlier. What do you have? Um, so, of all the webshot sites that you've shown today, mm -hmm. do you have any specific opinions on who offers the best quality in their printing and products? No, because I I haven't tested a whole bunch of these things. I went through um, iPhoto because I knew that anything that Apple does is always going to be really good quality. So, and it didn't fail me. I mean, the stuff shipped very quickly. They were in nice boxes. They were in nice presentation shaped or uh, containers. Uh, they came in great shape. Uh, and the price wasn't cheap, but the quality was excellent. And I was very pleased with what I had gotten for the price. Um, a lot of these things, like I go and check out, always make sure that you check out online, see people's reviews, things like that. Make sure that the site that you're using is going to be good and the quality of the stuff is good. If you have question, order one item. Make sure that they have a return guarantee on there. Make sure that you can take a look at it and see everything and uh, see how well the items hold up before you order, order 100 of them. I know that with, say, lulu.com, mm -hmm. since what they are offering is a print-on-demand <laughs> service, yeah. you can print out one book for yourself, and then you can see what the final product looks like. And if you like it, you can order multiple copies. Oh, nice. Well, that's, that's really nice to know. Um, and there was also a suggestion by, a question by someone in the chat room wondering, how they can possibly do things inexpensively. Mm -hmm. And one thing you could do with the print-on-demand services is you could create the book, and if you can't afford to give away all the books, right. you can sell them to your <laughs> relatives, <laughs> and, <laughs> and you can sell them at a discounted <coughs> price mm -hmm. over um, what they are recommending for the retail price. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And um, I mean, here's, you can just go to lulu.com and click and see how much these things are going to cost as you print them. Um, people like, to, I know weddings are a huge thing. Um, they want all these things done and they want something that's going to look really nice. They can send off as a thank you. You can go ahead and do that as well. Um, inexpensive, get your own printer, you know, download the free software, do the stuff, try out some of these things at home see getting these things printed locally, see how much it's going to be. You can definitely get into some money very quickly by doing it all yourself and learning. Uh, a lot of these websites are established and they have you know places that just print this stuff night and day. So I'm going to guess that you're going to get pretty good quality all the time. If you don't know what you're doing and you want to attempt it at home, definitely you're going to go through some product, you know, trying to figure the whole thing out, see how it's going to work. And generally, if you're trying to try to save money, 
you're going to end up spending more money by doing it yourself in many cases. Well, you can also create a PDF book that you could mm -hmm. email to friends that they could print out themselves if they decide they wanted a hard copy of it. Exactly. And it's just like giving a CD or a DVD to somebody with a slideshow on it. They can do whatever they want with those images from there. It's very easy to create one. You can go through Photoshop Elements. There's places online that you can upload all your photos. It'll give you a DVD. It'll give you a starting screen on there. People put it in. It'll launch it, give you a nice black screen, give you the audio video controls on there. And it may cost you five or ten bucks to go ahead and do that. And if somebody wants to make a t-shirt or something out of it, then you can point them to all these websites, have them spend their money on what it is that they want to create of those images, but you've at least given them something to work with. Art Girl in the chat room would like a quick review of how you create a PDF in Photoshop. And while oh. we're here, Photoshop Elements. Sure, and actually, one of the anytime you want want to create a photo uh, PDF here, two different ways. In some cases, like in Photoshop, when we go and we do a Save As here, a PDF is something that's actually part of the Save As menu. So here it is, it's a Save As, and I can get a Photoshop PDF right there. But in many cases, I can go in, um, like I am in iPhoto here, and if I want to print this to a PDF using a, a virtual printer. I don't have any printer hooked up to this machine, but I can go under File Print, and I can go and click on my printer right here and set this up. If I have a particular, uh, let's see, here's my calendar, and I want to print this calendar, I can choose Print, and then inside my Print dialog box, I have the ability to go in and save this as a PDF file. And um, as I save this as a PDF, it will go ahead and create a PDF for me that I can then send out from there. Um, in many cases, if you have a physical printer, like a desktop printer there, you'll be able to access it right from here. And if you have Adobe or Adobe Reader, Adobe Acrobat or Acrobat Reader installed, you will be able to see um, Print to Adobe Acrobat in one of your, as one of your print items. But either way, save as or print to in the chat room, uh, one of the guests asks, what about language options? Can we make calendars in different languages using iPhoto without changing the default operating system language? Um, <clears throat> I don't know about the different languages here. I do know that we could go in, and when we did our, um, we have our settings here, we were able to go in and choose our national holidays. We got all of our styles here. Um, I don't know about different languages. Um, I think we'd have to go in and set our preferences on our machine to be a different language. What do you think, Sarah? Um, is it possible to just directly change the, the headings, the, like the March oh, and the day headings? Yeah, we could go through here. And if we had, like on this particular layout, we have three. We could go in, and there's our caption. Then we could just go in and translate. And right, put but it can in you change March 2011? Um, doesn't look like it. Doesn't, it. No, it doesn't allow me to do that. So I'm going to guess that because of my system preference here, um, I have this set up as North American English on as my system. And I don't want to go in there. I don't want to change it because I can't read German or any other things. But I could go through here. There's language and text. So here's the language. And say I choose... Um, Spanish. And uh, so if I change this to Spanish here, I may be able to get Spanish as a as the language through here. I'm not sure. Nope. I know that what region that you install this in will allow you to do those languages, but something like this, I don't know how we could actually go in and change and edit the actual names on here. Settings there, start the calendar on there. Show everything from Italy, but it still doesn't give me my ability to change that language. So that I don't know. 
I know there's a way that's got to be to do it. Now this doesn't actually change it. So formats, United States, Gregorian calendar, region. No, I could change it to the region here, show all the... Hmm. Not sure. You might have to have a whole different install. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that if you buy Adobe's uh, Creative Suite 5 and you install the UK version, you get like color with a U, things like that. I actually had a client do that, and uh, they were not happy. Well, also, there's, I mean, the default uh, holidays mm -hmm. might be different. Well, the default holidays we can change here because we can actually go under our settings here and we can change all of our holidays for like Finland here. And when we do that, it'll go in and it'll import nice. all the holidays in in there. What day? <laughs> uh, the day of Finnish culture. That's the day that uh, culture is. J.L. Runeberg's day. So of course. It, it puts it in Finnish and with an English translation, but doesn't change the dates in the calendar to finish. No. Nope. No, huh. Veterans Day. Uh, oh, that's an interesting one. Good grief. I'm glad I don't speak Finnish. Or even type it. <laughs> Easter I don't Monday. know how to type that one either. <laughs> yep. So. But I suppose but if you were Finnish, you might have some idea how to type it. Yep. Norway. That's all the Norwegian. Monday, Thursday. Is um, that like Tuesday, Friday? How do you Friday? say that one? <laughs> You're <laughs> just so dumb. Trying it. Yeah, when it sounds like sliding across a wet pavement with, uh, yeah. But no, you can, that's the one nice thing about this. When you do uh, calendars online, though, it will ask you, um, you know, what dates you want to include, how you want to include it as well, because obviously you're going to want to have calendars done in any type of language. Let's go to Zazzle and see what we can do. So if we go in and <coughs> choose something like this, get started with your drop and drag tool here, create a calendar. Large numbers. Display events and holidays in the US and Canada. And I think this is going to be where you're actually going in. And depending on where you are in the world, it's going to allow you to do that. Because I don't see an ability to go in and change. Um, change it right here as we go through and do this. One of the frustrating things about doing these large things online is you have to go in and you have to upload every single image through their uploads, be able to drop it in there and then manage everything through their particular site. Um, there we go, drop it in, okay. <coughs> Choose style, size, color, just let's say display options. Yeah, I don't get the ability to go in and change. I mean, I can either display or not display these items. Hmm. So I'm going to guess the, the place that your computer is registered and the type of software that you have in there is going to be the uh, determining factor in what language you're going to get. But I'm sure there's places out there that will create any type of foreign language calendar you can imagine. Anything else you have to cover there? That's pretty much it. I've uh, spent a couple hours already going through this. Well, I mean, can you believe that? <laughs> before we, we go off, there is yeah. a um, suggestion, uh, AZ yeah. Factor suggests that a nice gift um, that you could create would be a slideshow created in an iPhoto with music that you could burn to disk with. Mm -hmm. That that would make a nice inexpensive gift. And I'm wondering, would Light you be room. able to Light walk us through something like that? Sure. <coughs> yeah, that's a good question. But I also want to mention that Lightroom has a similar feature. So if you're, if you don't have a Mac, you and you do have Lightroom, you still have a chance. And they have, uh, I think you can put a song to it as well. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, you can you can create a lot of these, and a lot of a lot of different places have this. You can do this online. You can do this with a lot of your software on there. Within i uh, within uh, 
photo elements, you can create a CD or DVD jacket label as well. When you go into actual elements organizer here, it allows you to go in, I have to launch organizer here. I could actually go in and create um, a DVD with a menu right from here. So create a DVD with a menu using you know, Premiere Elements, which allows us to take all these images here, put it onto a DVD with a menu, a play bar, things like that, and actually have it work. And then you can create your own photo jacket. And that can be done right in Photoshop Organizer or Elements Organizer. <coughs> if we're going to go through here and we're going to do a slideshow, I could take this entire slideshow here and do the slideshow button, which takes everything puts it right into a slideshow. Wait for it. And then here's our themes. We can click our music. We can use any music here. Don't use anything that people are going to go ahead and get that for or get you for if you're going to publish this to other places where people are going to realize. We can fit the slide to show to the music there and show captions, shuffle, scale to fit the screen there as we go. And then we can click play. Actually, go and click play here. So there's our music. There's our settings as we go. <coughs> we can click play. And at the bottom here, we've got our slideshow, our tunes, our music. And we can also go in and click on our settings right there. Stop the whole thing. Get our little bar right there. And. Now we just need to go in and save this whole thing as a actual slideshow. I haven't saved this as a slideshow here, but uh, this should be pretty good. So I'm going to go under File, Export, Export to a Slideshow here. <coughs> and with this, we can export this to our mobile device small, medium, or large uh, displays here. And so we can play it, on the play it on the computer, play it on the computer, or we can do it on an iPhone as well. Um, we can automatically send the slide show to iTunes. Not everybody has that. So we can do a custom export where we can actually save this to a QuickTime Movie. And I'm going to export this. And there's our options. Here we can go ahead and do all of our settings, um, add any sound that we want to internet streaming here, click OK, click Save. So this is exporting the slideshow right now as a full-on movie that we could then burn to a DVD. And this was all just under the file export window here. Um, since this is only for Mac purposes only, um, you know, we can go and we can share this to like our Facebook page or Flickr. Um, we can send to iWeb and actually create a web page out of this. I'm not going to wait for the whole export here. Um, but we can send to uh, a DVD. So we have an interactive DVD. And we can burn the whole thing. So if we send to iDVD, it will take all of these images. So we wait for it. And some more p digital paint drying. Uh, yes, digital paint drying, pixel prodding. <clears throat> Waiting for it. Waiting for it. It's worth the wait. So this is an actual DVD setup, and this was under the share section of it. And so we can look at all the different themes here or the favorites as well. Um, there are no favorites. Let's see. We can go in and do like our main theme part. We can do buttons on our items as well. And then our media that we want, we can apply audio to this, whatever music that we want to pull from, so whatever music we have in there. And I believe there is a way to turn off that little Apple logo down there, um, but I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's got to be in there. Um, then we can go in and we can include all of our images that we had in our particular event that we had um, right there. and dump that right in for my slideshow. And yep, there it is. So <coughs> let's go in and delete that. So this is my slideshow right here. And drag content here to play automatically when it gets inserted. 
So we could go in and create something right there. Here's my <coughs> main page there, and then my entire slideshow. We go and type on this. Let's see, we can drag these in here. So we get our little revolving picture going around here. Be able to edit this. Add a submenu, add the movie there, get some information on what it's going to look like here, how long it's going to loop at the beginning when somebody loads the whole thing, and main volume. Okay. So now if we press play here, comes in, brings us right into the whole thing here. I can click on my slideshow. It'll bring me into my slideshow. I should get tr slide transitions every five seconds. Or if I click on this, I can go through. I could have my music playing. I get my little controller up here as well. It was many years ago when we were far younger. Of course, who does DVDs anymore? Exactly, <laughs> but at least, at least you can do a DVD. <coughs> I think you can also uh, export a QuickTime movie. You can. And, and that's, uh, that's Yeah, when we, did, when, we, when we went under File Export here in iPhoto, that was, that's what we did the first time, was exporting just as a, a QuickTime movie. When we're done with this, all we have to do is click on the Burn button right here, put in a DVD, click Burn, and yep, the tray pops out waiting for me. Oh, I love Max. Put it in there, click the Burn button, and then when you put it in, this is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to launch your player. You're going to see this. People can click on my slideshow and walk you through the entire slideshow right there. It doesn't cost you a thing. All you need is a $2,000 Mac, iPhoto, and some DVDs, and a whole bunch of pictures. So ask for a Mac for Christmas, and you'll be all set. One way you can deliver large PDF files to friends and family is you could use usendit.com mm -hmm. to put files online. The files are available for seven days, and they can download them to their computers. And it's free. And it's free. There's a lot of places out there. Dropbox is one of them. Usendit is another. Let's see if my web browser actually works. <clears throat> Mobile Me. What's that? Mobile, Mobile Me. Me. You yep. can post. Um, you send it .com is uh, right here, and um, you can send stuff overnight. You can do a trial version, or you can do a non-paying one where you can only load so much. Uh, Dropbox is another one, and it's free um, file sending. So you can send larger files, and you can find out what Dropbox does, how it works. Pretty simple stuff. You've got files that you need to send to somebody. Your email system won't handle it. You have a huge PDF. You've got all these pictures that you don't want to pay to have put into a DVD. You send it to your parents. Say, here they are. Figure it out yourself. So. Well, also, if you put them into a large PDF, mm -hmm. the files only go up one file at a time. So you'd want to put them into a PDF before you tried to put it onto Dropbox or you send it. Yes, because then you have to download those files one at a time. Yeah. It's really, really not fun. <laughs> Someone in the chat room also suggests send space as a send space okay. as an alternative. Mm -hmm. Any f any uh, last final questions in the chat room? I ask that as I look for as, as things look for I the final saved. questions. Oops. All right. Well, I think. Uh, I think we're probably good to go. That's yeah, a, that's we'll leave a good you. We'll, we'll leave you with the, the final picture as uh, Speedo gives you a farewell. One of my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speedo might be my favorite photo cat. I, just <laughs> gotta say. I think so. And yes, he does look like that, folks. All just right. like that. Well, thank you once again for another informative class. Wonderful. And thank you, everybody. I'm sure we'll see you sometime next year. Yes. Reminder that I am signing off for the year, folks. I will be back in January. Have a great time. Download this stuff. Watch it. Send it to your friends and family. And if you really want to make gifts, just download the Photoshop elements in this and send it to your friends so that uh, they can make their own stuff. <laughs>